Hey guys, it's Tara Radcliffe and welcome to my home. By popular demand, today I will be showing you how to make gourmet sabzi. Gorma meaning stew and sabzi meaning herbs is a delicious and popular dish among Iranians. The flavorful combination of aromatic herbs, slow cooked beef or lamb, fork tender beans and dried limes makes this dish so tasty, nutritious and absolutely irresistible. Some people may feel a little intimidated by this dish and they won't attempt to make it because it seems really complex, but it's actually not. It's really simple. All it takes is a little bit of time and a whole lot of love. So let's get right into it and let me show you how to make this amazing dish. All right guys, the first thing that we're gonna go over on this dish is your herbs. You're going to need about five bunches of curly parsley, two bunches of green onions, and two bunches of cilantro. You're going to give this a rough chop because we're gonna want to add this into our food processor. So Gourmet Savzi has a really, really soft spot in my heart for me. I remember when I would go to school during the day and I would come home and our home would be filled with the aromas of Gourmet Savzi. Now, for the people that have had Gourmet Savzi before, I'm sure you know the smell of it. It's very, very distinct. It has such a comforting aroma and like, my mouth is literally drooling because I'm thinking of it right now. <laughs> so my mom would make this and it would just make me so happy. Like, always puts like the biggest smile on my face when I would think about it. It was literally one of my favorite things besides Zeresh Kola. Oh, I have to show you guys how to make Zeresh Kola one day. That's really good too. Brings back good memories growing up. It's comfort to my soul. So for your green onions, you're going to want to remove the, the outer top part of it and you're only going to want the green parts. You don't want the white parts of your green onions. All right guys, so I have my herbs all pre-chopped. I'm going to now put everything into my food processor. So just FYI, if you don't have a food processor, it, it will be a little bit more difficult to make this, but it's actually super doable as well. So don't stress out about it. You just have to spend a little bit more time doing the pre-chopping yourself because again, you wanna make sure that it's super minced up. So I know that every Iranian says this, that their mom makes the best gourmet sabzi, but trust me on this, my mom makes the best gourmet sabzi. <laughs> my, my mom's gourmet sabzi is so bomb. So all of my herbs are all chopped up. They are ready to be fried. So this is the consistency that you want your herbs to look like once they've been chopped. As you can see, they're really, really finely chopped because that's going to make or break your warm sabzi, guys. So now that we have chopped up our herbs, we want to get a large frying pan and we want to pour about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna heat that up and we're going to add our herbs to the frying pan. Absolutely beautiful. So the next thing we're going to add to this is one of the key ingredients to gourmet sabzi. That's called fenugreek. So you can either get fresh fenugreek 
at the Middle Eastern store or dried fenugreek. I prefer the dried fenugreek because I feel like the flavor is more robust, but um, fresh fenugreek is great as well. If you're going to be using fresh fenugreek, you're going to want to get one um, bundle of that and pre-chop it with your vegetables um, along with everything else. But if you're doing dried fenugreek, you're going to want to use one to two tablespoons of that. Make sure to not go overboard with it because if you add too much fenugreek to your formosamsi, it's going to get it really bitter. Trust me, nobody wants a bitter formosamsi. Just give that all a stir. We want to pre-fry this for about five to eight minutes on a medium high temperature. Make sure you keep on moving it around because you don't want to burn your herbs. By the way, if you see like big chunks of herbs in here, just toss it out. Okay guys, so it looks like it's all done. It's nicely cooked down. Again, just do this for about five to eight minutes. You just wanna get everything nice and pre-fried. Then I'm going to add all of this into my mixing bowl. So now that my herbs are all fried, I'm going to start putting this stew together. I have one large onion and I'm just going to chop this up into small pieces. I do have a little trick though when it comes to cutting onions that prevents you from crying, even though sometimes it still happens for me. So the trick is to breathe out of your mouth. I know. Don't breathe out of your nose, breathe out of your mouth, and you won't cry. So <laughs> our team here said, another tip that I'm laughing at right now. <laughs> he said to keep your tongue out like this. I don't know. <laughs> he said that the juices of the onion will gravitate towards your tongue. <laughs> God, and now I breathe through my nose because he said that and now I'm crying. <laughs> Woo. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna stick to my, I'm gonna stick to my, <laughs> my breathing through my mouth tip. I don't know about the tongue. <laughs> okay, so now that I have my onions chopped, I'm going to add it into my big pot. You're going to need a big pot for this. The biggest that you can find in your home. <laughs> and you're going to preheat that to a uh, medium high heat. We're gonna add olive oil. I use about two to three tablespoons. Wait for that to heat up and add your onions. Get the oil fully incorporated in the onions. And we're just going to fry this. So while I'm sauteing my onions here, if you guys want to see more kind of recipes or home tips, things like that. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram. It's at Tara underscore Radcliffe. I'm pretty entertaining. <laughs> You're gonna wanna follow me. <laughs> okay guys, so my onion is nice and brown. So the next thing that you're going to want to add is stew meat. So I have two pounds of, of beef stew meat. I have them cut in one inch cubes. Now some people like to use lamb, some people like to use chicken. It's really up to you. All three of them would be amazing in this dish. I'm gonna add that into my pot. So definitely make sure that you pre-rinse your meat. It's really, really important that you don't have um, stew meat or chicken or anything not pre-minced. Especially with red meat, you have to rinse it. You gotta remove all of the blood. It's disgusting as that sound sounds, um, but it's really, really important. As it's browning, add one teaspoon of black pepper, add a couple tablespoons of turmeric, I love turmeric. It's 
one of my favorite, favorite spices. A couple teaspoons of sea salt, and we're just going to mix that all up again. Really make sure that all your seasonings have mixed well with your meat. If you're vegan, you can also make this dish. Instead of using the meat, use chopped up brown, uh, brown mushrooms. Just chop them up in halves, in chunky halves, and do the same steps. It's still going to be really, really good. Guys, so now that everything is mixed up with my meat, I'm just going to add my herbs. So now that you have your herbs and your meat mixed together, we're going to add about four to six cups of water. Once that's all put together, just give it a good stir and let it come back to a boil. So the next ingredient that you're going to need for this stew are dried limes. So dried limes, you're going to find at mostly like a Middle Eastern grocery store. And another thing, if you cannot find dried limes, that is still okay. You can use fresh limes. Add three tablespoons of the fresh lime juice towards the end of the cooking process. I recommend anywhere from five to seven dried limes. So now that I have my limes all pre-poked, just going to add that into my stew and give that a good mix. The limes will, once they start cooking, they're gonna get more into the stew. They're not gonna be popping up on top like that. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let that boil for about five minutes and then we're going to lower the temp. It's been boiling for a little bit now and now I'm just going to Lower the temperature to medium low. We're gonna cover it up and we're going to let this sit for about an hour and a half. So it's been an hour and a half and my stew is still boiling, looking amazing. I'm now going to add my kidney beans. I have two 15 ounce cans of kidney beans that I've drained and rinsed. So I'm just going to add that into my stew and just gonna mix that in. Once you get that mixed in, you're just going to cover it back up and we're going to wait an additional 20 minutes. So you always wanna pair warmasabzi with rice as well. All right, it's cake, I make you cake. <laughs> So my horma sabzi is done, and we're all ready to get it served. This looks absolutely amazing. It smells so good. The colors are bright and beautiful. Can't wait to dig in. I'm gonna call my husband down to come eat with me. He's a white boy but he loves his Persian food. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are going to sit down and enjoy our meal. Meanwhile, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more easy and healthy recipes. Also, make sure to comment below if there are any specific recipes you wanna see from me. I love seeing requests from you guys. Thanks guys, have a great day. Yeah, let's eat, let me get a place for you guys. <laughs>